All right, so we're working with this Anytone AT778 Uniform Victor today. Now this is a great little dual band mobile radio and for the price, it's gonna be really hard to beat. The radio has a maximum output of 25 watts on both VHF and UHF. You don't get the 50 watts that you normally get with a more expensive radio, but it still works pretty good the way it is. It also has a nice color screen on the front right here. I think it's a little small for an old man, but it's still perfectly usable. We have two VFOs on the front right here. We can display two different bands, and I also think that you can display two frequencies on the same band. However, you can't receive two frequencies at the same time. For example, if somebody's coming through on the top VFO, but somebody wants to come through on the bottom VFO, you won't hear the bottom VFO until the top one is clear, if that makes any sense. That is a dual watch setup. It's not like a full duplex setup like my Yezu over here, but that one also costs a lot more. We also have two S meters on the display right here. The bigger one is the active VFO, of course. And then this little one on the bottom is for your bottom VFO. Now those are pretty nice. I do like that. All right, so this knob in its normal state will serve as a VFO. All you have to do is rotate it to change the frequency. It will also serve as a multifunction knob in the menu items to change the parameters of menu items. You can also press it in for enter. And of course you can get to your frequencies right there and rotate that and change one megahertz at a time or as little as you like. For example, you can use it to change any of the parameters on P1 through six right here. We'll change the volume, press P6, and then we can adjust the volume right there. Um, I find that that uh, works pretty good around 20 to 25, something like that, and in a bass environment. I haven't had it in the mobile yet, so you might need to crank it all the way up, and that will go up to uh, 36, and then it starts over again. So it's a multifunction knob. It'll work the same for any of these other P1 through P6. Now I do like a separate knob for stuff like volume and squelch and stuff like that, but I think this is a pretty good solution that still gives you easy access because this is a pretty small radio. There's also some buttons on the mic that you can customize for easy access, and I'm gonna get to those here shortly. And there's also a pretty cool DC input voltage right here on the bottom. I do like that. Now mine came with the radio, the mic, the mounting bracket, the manual, the power cable, and this accessory bag right here that's got some necessary mounting hardware. The mic can hang up from a single point right here with this hole in the top. You can use a screw or something. They didn't really include any hardware to mount that. Now I didn't get the version that comes with the PC programming cable. I don't need the PC programming cable, but if you want that one, it's only $5 more. I think it was $129. I'll leave a link below to both versions so you can take a look and see if you like either one. Now, in my opinion, the menus in this radio are pretty self-explanatory and easy to navigate through. If you press this function button right here, you can get into the menu and you get five submenus right here. There's four and there's number five. So for example, let's dive into number one, the function menu. This radio comes with an annoying beep right out of the box that I think is turned up to four or five, something like, something really annoying, right? Um, I prefer this off, so you can adjust that right down if you like. Turn that sucker off. And you can go to number two, the tuning steps right here. It's set to 5K, it's pretty good. If you wanna listen to FRS or GMRS, change that to 6.25K, and it'll allow you to tune to those frequencies. But we're gonna leave it on five for the moment. And then of course, this P3 right here is your back. So just back, and you can back all the way out back to the regular function. If you're finding any value in this video, please click that like button below and subscribe to this channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Okay, so back to the video. Now I do have a USA version right here that's opened up already from the factory to transmit anywhere it'll receive per the sticker right here on the top of the radio. But don't worry, if you happen to be in another country, I'm gonna show you how to fix that coming up real soon. Now, there are quite a few other options in the menus right here. I'm not gonna go through all of these right here to kind of tell you what they all mean. I'll refer you to the menu for that. But luckily, they do give you the P1 through P6 for your quick access on the more common items, so that's really a good thing right there. All right, so let's go through our P1 through P6 quick menu buttons right here. P1 is your active VFO. It flips your VFO from A to B. Number two is your VFO or memory. So if I push that, I get an error because I don't have any memories programmed in here. Three is monitor, which is kind of useful. 
So if you press that, you can instantly bypass the squelch. That can be handy if you're listening to a weak signal and you want to do that instantly, no squelch. Vox is you speak into the microphone without having to push your PTT. And then the squelch is pretty handy right here on P5. I'm in a base station situation, so I'll keep that pretty low. Usually one or two is pretty good, but if you're in the mobile, you might have to crank that up a little bit. And then of course our volume that we talked about earlier. Now the other thing is, is if you push function again, you get six more options. Uh, there we go. Direction, so that flips the screen direction. That gets you more mounting options right there, so that's really handy. All right, so if you want to do that again, you just have to push P6 next time because it flips the position of the buttons as well. Now shift, that's your repeater plus or minus, uh, your offset, and then scan, all right? So scan is kind of slow, I think, but you know, whatever, it works. And then power, your power levels can be adjusted right here. And then of course our tones right here, you can turn your tones on right there. And if you press it again, you can adjust the actual tone itself. So we will turn that back off. So you get 12 options right there. So that is pretty cool. So the other cool thing is of course, we have a speaker in the bottom of the radio, like a normal radio, but this microphone has a speaker that's built into it. Now this can be turned on or off with the menu, but the cool thing is, is if you're in a loud environment, it'll allow you to hear a little bit better. Just hold the microphone up a little closer to your ear and that'll help with that. We also have a full keypad for frequency entry and DTMF. We can just use that to type in a frequency, 147410, right there, it comes right up. Now these buttons on the side right here, you can route these to whatever you like in the menu or whatever is available rather. Uh, I've got mine routed to volume, power, and squelch right there. So I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. Just make sure that this little slider isn't turned off on the side of the microphone, otherwise these volume up and down buttons aren't gonna work. All right, so to program those four buttons on the mic itself, just go ahead and go back into your menu. Go to number four under hand key. And these, there's five choices here. The first one is the backlight LEDs of the mic itself. And these next four are the buttons. The PA is the first one. I've got, I've got it routed to volume. So you can press that and select whichever one you want to, to route that to. I'm gonna leave it on volume is the way I had it. And then of course the next three, I've got power, squelch, and then the bottom one is our repeater tones. Now real quick to access the speaker in the mic, let's go back into our menu. Under number one, function. And then it's item 16 right here, speaker. So it's set to main right now, just press that and you can select main and handheld or handheld. So let's go back out of this. So now when we press, that's our mic speaker. And we also have this large AB button right here that swaps our VFO right here like so. And then we have the two LED indicators to show you which VFO it's on. So you don't have to look at the radio to know that. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, you're loud and clear. So I'm trying out this new radio right here. Got this AnyTone uh, AT778. So you say it sounds pretty good and clear? Yes, you sound loud and clear. Hey, baby. You sound pretty loud and clear yourself. Uh, what's your location? Memphis, Tennessee. We're getting ready for Thanksgiving. Turkey in the oven. All right, so we're sitting on the 440 band. We're gonna do a quick power test, see what we got. And we got about 18 watts on high, 10 watts on, on middle power, and about three and a half watts on uh, low power. Let's see how the uh, two meter does. All right, low power, about the same, about three and a half, 10. And about 18, about the same power levels uh, on both bands. They are a little bit low according to what the specs could be. Maybe my meter's a little bit off, I don't know, but they did read a little bit low on my setup right here. All right, so I don't have a spectrum analyzer or a deviation meter to check how clean the radio is or what the deviation level is. I can say that I was in a QSO, a group of people talking together, 
uh, the other day, and one of them did report that my audio was a little bit low compared to everybody else in the group. He said it wasn't bad, but it was just a little bit low because I was asking him what the radio sounded like. Um, unfortunately, I went through the menu to look for a mic gain control, and this radio doesn't have a mic gain, so you're kind of stuck with what you have. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, this is a USA model that transmits everywhere it receives. It's already opened up. But if you live in another country where the radios are not like that, where they're restricted, it's an easy fix for that. All you have to do, like, is turn off the radio. Now, you push Function and P4 while you're turning on the power. I might not be able to do this without blocking the camera. That'll get you into the service menu. No, it won't. There we go, now we're in the service menu. So use your uh, VFO right here to go to channel 43. See where it says mode two right there? That's the one you want. Um, but if you're in mode one, then that means your radio is restricted. So hold down the PTT on the microphone. And now you see you can change that to mode one. All right, that's mode one, that's the one we don't want. So let's go back to mode two, right? Let go of the PTT. Turn your radio off and turn it back on. All right, so we're gonna test it out. I've changed the tuning steps to the 0.625 or 6.25. Let's try a GMRS frequency, 4625625. We're in dummy load, so don't worry about that. I believe that's channel one of the FRS, and we should be transmitting here. Hello, test, one, two, one, two. And we're transmitting. So that's all there is to opening that radio up. It takes two seconds, it's very easy. So obviously you wanna make sure that you don't transmit anywhere that you're not licensed for. You can wind up getting yourself in trouble with that, so be very careful with that. So honestly, this is a great little radio for the price. For under $150, you almost can't go wrong. Now of course, that's the price at the time of this video. If you're watching this video later on, that could go up, of course. You know, a name brand dual band or like a Yezu or Kenwood or anything like that, ICOM, those usually will start at $300 and go up from there. And of course, you know, they're better radios, of course, but you know, if you're just starting out, this is a great little radio. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching.